G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, if you've got a, a metal lathe and you want something to do, one of the best little projects you can come up with is make up a, a fire eater or a flame liquor or a vacuum engine or a sterling or whatever type of small little motor you want to make. It's good fun. I've made them in the past. Never had much luck. I made this one. These are the plans from it and I played around with the design and <laughs> yeah, it didn't really run properly. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so if you're retired and you want to do something with your lathe rather than just sit down and look at it, this is the way to go. Now, to make these, um, there's a couple of things you need. Obviously you need a lathe and then you need some probably brass and some aluminium and some stainless steel and some patience, and away you go. But there's also something else you have to have when you do that, do these, and you're going to have some nuts and bolts that will screw the whole thing together, and it's got to look neat, you know, like, everybody's got nuts and bolts, so, you know, you collect them over the years, everything you throw out, you, you'd always take the screws and bolts out of it and keep them, think, oh, one day those little suckers just might come in handy. I'll show you what I've got in the way of small nuts and bolts, this is pretty representative of what most people have in their workshop. You have your small nuts and bolts container. Oh, peach slices, yummy. And this is my collection from over the years. Just, just the tiny bite, nuts and bolts. But what's the problem? The problem is they're all different. You know, you're lucky to get three or four of the same length, the same thread. There's all sorts of threads. They're weird threads, some of them. You know, not standard threads. Nothing matches, and you probably haven't got taps for most of them. And then the heads are all different. I mean, that one's one pattern. Phillips head, I hate Phillips head patterns on modelings. They look like crap. No, I won't look, you know, there's a lot. Everybody uses these damn things. Round heads, hmm, slotted, they look good. I like them. And then you can get some of the more classic style heads as well. But overall, they're, they're all useless, you know. You can use a few of them, but... There's no standard, you know, they just look like crap. So what are you going to do? Well, the best thing you can do, I think, is use a classic pattern, a neat pattern, and buy yourself a set of small little tiny bolts and nuts. And the pattern I like best is by far the best. Allen-headed bolts, I mean, they're in a class of their own. They're a proper classy fixed fastener. Uh, they use them on motorcycles and on engines and electronics and you name it these days. It, everybody's finally realised that this is a quality, very compact fastener. It doesn't mark the work because the, you don't have an external spanner. You use a key on it. You can recess it. It looks really classy on, on, on a model engine. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here's the small model engine I got from Banquet for appraisal in the last video. And it needs a bit of chiseling up if you think I want to do to this. But if you look at it, it's very it's quite well put together. Uh, and they use three mil stainless steel or plated Allen headed fasteners right throughout. Does a neat job. Looks really good. And the same on that uh, Sterling engine I had, they used all Allen headed bolts on it. They went smaller than 3mm, but 3mm is a good handy size because, well, for a start, most of those little tap and die sets you get go down to 3mm. They don't go below 3mm generally. I'll show you the set I've got. Okay, here's my set. I've had this for about 40 years, literally. Japanese, it works okay. You can see I've replaced lots of the, the carbon steel taps that have snapped over the years. And here's your smaller size. It's, it's three mil, and I mean, you can hand tap three mil without much chance of snapping them off if you're careful. You know, and you do everything properly. It's a good size. It's not that small that it's you know really difficult to use, and it's not that big that it's going to look too big. So yeah, uh, there you go. Three mil, zero point five mil uh, thread pitch. So what am I heading to? Well, 
I want to get back into these model motors and I uh, haven't been doing it for about 10 years. I want to get the nuts and bolts. So I looked around to see what was available in just nice carbon steel and a big range of lengths you know, in three mil. And believe it or not, actually Banggood have a really good kit on there that, well, I can review stuff there. So I thought, what the hell, well, let's, get a, let's get a set and review it and I can also use them. So I'll show you this set and, and I'll tell you why I think it's a pretty good set. Well, for starters, Banggood have sold over 4,700 of these little sets. 4,700, that's a lot of little sets. So they must be pretty popular. And of those buyers, 438 did uh, text reviews on them and gave it five stars. So once again, that's another good thing. So, um, yeah, popular. Why is it popular? Well, these are Suli's brand, which is a trademark, I think, to Banggood and they look to be a quality little bolt when you look at the photos you get 240 pieces in a little box so you've got 10 compartments and the price of that is $15 US or $20 Australian delivered and you get sizes you get nine sizes basically there's ten compartments so you get uh, uh, in length your variation it's four mil five mil six mil eight mil ten mil twelve mil sixteen mil twenty mil twenty five mil so you get twenty pieces of each of those and then you get sixty nuts which gives you two hundred and forty pieces in total and yeah that's a lot of nuts and bolts for not a lot of money I think. They're three mil. Uh, they don't actually give the thread pitch but it's, uh, it is actually 0 0.5 which is your standard thread pitch and uh, yeah these are basically I think great if you know for radio control, drones, model making, electronics. I think this is perfect little kit because yeah you have got that really good range of bolts and you've got quite a number of uh, in each size. The box of nuts and bolts weighs about 200 grams according to the website. I don't want to argue with that. You can see how big it is compared to my blokey hand and it actually measures what is that, 130 by 60. The little box is okay, it's, you know, it's a bit flimsy but yeah well good enough to do the job I suppose. And one partition divider is missing here, the nuts are mixed in with the bolts but no, oh well, stiff, that's nothing to worry about. You know, we're getting pretty cheap nuts and bolts I think for the money. Uh, what I'll do now is we're coming close, I can build out my uh, Andron Star uh, USB microscope which I, you know, I really like that thing, it's handy for this sort of work. And I'll come in close and give you some close up photos of the of the nuts and bolts. Okay, there you have it. So you can make something like this down the track if you uh, put your mind to it. I'm going to have another go at it. And uh, yeah, this is the ideal little kit, I think, to get you going and to do a nice job. And you know, 
it'll come up pretty damn neat, I think. So that's it from me. It's a pretty uh, basic video. Uh, I mean, if you've got this far uh, watching it, I suppose you've got uh, oil in your, in your veins and uh, you are a true machinist at heart. <laughs> All right, now the links to this particular little kit uh, are in the video description. There's some links to other bits and pieces that Banggood have got which are related. And that's it from me. I thought it was a bargain. And it's uh, basically just a heads up video to, uh, to show you what's out there. All right, see you next time. Cheers.